Are you ready? Yeah. Good. Hi, I'm Robin Stoiber. Welcome to the National Quiz Choice Save High Online News. Here I have uh, Ms. Uh, Anu Kumar, who is the avid uh, writer of fiction and non-fiction for young and older uh, readers here in Singapore and Southeast Asia. And it's also widely available elsewhere on online um, as an e-book. Um, here at the Asian uh, Children's uh, Festival of Children's Content in Singapore in 2012, she's here to discuss more issues about uh, the future of books and apps and so forth. Um, but I will be asking her, you know, what uh, is going to be like, uh, you know, in the next couple of years. Um, Ms. Anu Kumar, welcome to the show. Yeah, hi, thanks. Um, a lot of people are, are trying to understand uh, what does it take uh, to, to be involved in the art of science of writing book reviews uh, on online versus print. Okay. Uh, actually, I've had the experience of both. I'm a blogger, I'm a guest blogger at a blog which is uh, run by several people and they blog mainly books for children and young adults. Okay, and for many years before that, I used to work for a newspaper and magazine and I used to be in charge of the book review section. So you could say that I have been, I mean, sort of been lucky to be involved in both sides of book review for blogs as well as newspapers and both are entirely different formats. Uh, for a newspaper, obviously the space is more limited and uh, the books that come in are more topical and current. So you have to be very selective in how you, in carefully how you choose your reviewers and how you review it. Okay, and you have to be very particular. You can't review because books are just coming out dime a dozen these days. So you have to pick books that you think have a sort of lasting appeal which appeal to the readers. And, and but whereas the criteria for selection for a blog, reviewing for a blog is entirely different. So the blog that we review for, it's called Saffron Tree and we get all kinds of books and it's not limited to time or a certain period or even a country because we pick books that we think children and young adults should be reading which are multicultural, which are drawn from all over the world and so they're not necessarily limited by time. If we have been reviewing books which were published 40, 50 years back that we think have an enduring value. So the world of reviewing for a blog and a newspaper is entirely different. And as we do it, we learn along the way. And does it, all, does it also involve like uh, the number of words uh, that has been uh, published by the critique himself on, online? Is there any limit to it or is there a, a difference between a uh, print and online the number of words that has been published? Yeah, a print review is obviously uh, very uh, limited because there's only so, so much space that a newspaper can devote to book reviews. That, that's all for online? For, news, for newspapers, for print. Okay. Yeah. Whereas for a blog, uh, you can't, you can obviously, there's no limit on words, but you obviously have to, have to be very succinct and crisp because you can't afford to lose reader interest because blogs are also coming up. I mean, every day you have a new blog coming up and there are uh, books on, there are blogs on books all over the place. So how do you retain more readers? You have to be as entertaining and as crisp in your writing style to retain the readership. And so, do, so for you as a blogger and a reviewer, usually how many words do you write uh, for a review or for online? For an online, uh, like recently I did a review which, which was put out last week. So I did, it, it, it was for a young adult book and it was around 600 words. And the difference, also the interesting thing about a blog review is that uh, you have to be very savvy about the, how, how a web page looks like, how to put in links, how to put in images. For a blog, you have that kind of you know, flexibility. There is a newspaper, you just leave it to the page layout artists for those guys who do the layout, you leave it to them. But to do a blog, you have to be much more savvy about a lot more things. But isn't it true that if you write a book review, like on a blog or online, yeah. uh, it's not limited to or, or restricted to the number of words that you wish to review? Let's say if a reviewer would write just about, just about 50 words yeah. on, on a book review. Is that uh, considered okay? Or, or, is, or this, is there more? Uh, normally there's a certain format to a book review. Okay, uh, I mean it depends on the kind of book. Like obviously if you're reading a non-fiction book, the criteria is different. And if you're reading a book for a child, uh, a book that is meant for children and young adults, it would be different for them for meant for an older reader. So, for example, if I'm if I'm reviewing a fiction book for a for a ten year old child, so I look at how 
you know, uh, how interesting is the presentation, the cover and everything, and how, how interesting is the language. Uh, and you can do this in, in limited number of words because uh, if a child is reading it, his attention span is limited. And also, uh, you, have, you have to be as crisp and as in, succinct in your style to retain the reader's attention. But whereas if, if you look at an online, uh, in a, if you look at a print magazine like the New York Review of Books, or they have these long review essays, and which are much more detailed and researched, and those are mainly non-fiction books. So you have to have an idea about the subject. The reviewer has to know about the subject. He has to know about the author's area of interest for the, and whether the author has been able to handle the subject well and what has been missing. So the treatment is correspondingly different. So, good. so the book reviews are dependent on the treatment by every reviewer. And so Ms. Anu, uh, another thing uh, about your expertise, though, uh, what's the future like for apps? Uh, and e-books uh, that's on the multi-media uh, platform. Um, what is your perspective? Well, I think uh, as an author, uh, one has to uh, I mean, automatically accept the fact that more and more readers are gravitating towards e-books. And part from the die-hard readers will obviously want a paper book, a paperback in their hands or a hard bond in their hands. But in an e-book application, you can read it on the run, you can, on, on, you can read it on the go, and it's environmentally also friendly. Uh, and I think they're the, the main thing, and one has to adapt to that more and more. So in your experience, you, you feel that, in your experience, there are more people actually buy e-books than print, or is there a balance? Uh, I'll, I'll give you my example. Okay, uh, I, I published mainly in India and South Asia a, a series of mythology books. And these came out in paperback format. But for people abroad, my publishers have decided to sell it as an ebook format because it's easier for them to download to access it. So I mean, I'm I'm actually in a learning position where my books are also in in paper in paper paperback format and also as an ebook. And there are more readers who are picking it up abroad, like in in the West and in the US. Oh, great. So, once again, uh, Ms. Uh, Anu, thank you for joining us here at the National Quiz Choice. And for those who are watching uh, our National Quiz Choice say hi online news, please uh, do look up at the Asian uh, Children's uh, Festival of Children's Content, that is, uh, 2012, and it's on, okay on their website for more information. Once again, I'm Robin Steinberg. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm sorry.